Hello and welcome to the quick start video guide for 3dliftplan.com. In this video we're going to run through the steps of creating a simple lift plan, viewing the lift simulation, and then printing it out. Since this is a quick start video guide we're just going to select simpler choices and explain the basic functionality of the software. Then in another video we'll go into more detail and explain some of the more advanced functions. If you haven't done so already, you'll need to create an account, install the Flux Player, and add in at least one crane to your account. If you need assistance, please refer to the first video in this series or the Getting, getting Started link in the support section of this website. I would also recommend that you read the 3D Lift Plan manual available in the support section uh, to get a bit more in-depth information. Okay, let's get started. Go ahead and click on the Go to My Account link in the middle of the page. To create a new lift plan, start by typing in a name in the Lift Plan Name field. I'm going to call it First Lift Plan. And then I'm going to push the Create New Lift Plan button right here. The Lift Plan Settings screen, go ahead and type in a description. and a customer name. Over here you can select which units you want to work in, either be it US or metric. You can select the color of the ground, sand, dirt, concrete, asphalt. We're going to stick with just sand for now. You can select the color of the sky, morning, sunset, or none. The view is the default view that um, you'll see right away. Uh, we'll get into that later when we discuss the Flux Player uh, features. Here you can select whether you want a textured background, you want to show the X, Y, and Z axes, or you want to show a grid. I'm going to push Next. Here you choose the shape of the object that you're lifting. And I'm going to go ahead and click a box for now. On this page, we can add in more detail about the load. Uh, we can select the, uh, we can change the weight. I'm going to change it to 4,000 pounds. Change the color. I'm going to make it white, so we can easily identify it when we uh, get more objects involved. Here in the rotation field, you enter in the rotation you want the load to be in relation to the boom. Then you can select whether you want the load to stay in at that angle when you swing the boom. Over here you can put in the basic dimensions of the load. I'm going to change these slightly. And then push the next button. This is where you would want to pick the rigging which most looks like your rigging and we're going to choose the simplest one for this example. This is the job site obstructions page. This is where you can add in buildings and other objects that are involved with your lift. Uh, for this example, we're just going to add in a simple building that is under construction in which we are going to place our load on top of. So start by adding a new object. So just click the Add New Object button here. This is the default object that will come up. So let's change it a little bit. Let's change this object's name to building number one. Let's change its shape from a box to a construction building. And let's change its color to blue. OK, I'm going to change the length of the building here to 100 feet, uh, the width to 50 feet, the height to 50 feet, and let's make it uh, five floors. Okay, and go ahead and push the update button. And now you can see we have our building. And just to let you know, you can always go back and change any of the values that you've changed. Let's say you wanted to change your rigging type once you've gotten this far into the project or change your um, load dimensions. Just go over here, click on the load dimensions page, and make your change, push the update button, and then come back to the page you were working on, 
and uh, you'll see your changes made. Now before I go any further, I feel I need to explain a little bit about three-dimensional space. 3D space is the virtual world that you are now working in to create this lift plan. And just like objects in our real world, 3D objects have length, width, and height dimensions to describe them. But in the 3D world, you also have to think of these dimensions in terms of the three different axes, named X, Y, and Z. And they're basically the same thing. The X axis, or X direction, is your length, the Y axis is your height, and the Z axis is your width. On our 3D workspace, there's a handy little diagram to help us remember which dimensions are what. If I pan down and zoom in a little, we can get a better look at it. Right here. Okay, you can see the, the red arrow is pointing down the length of the building, and that's our X direction. The Y is pointing straight up in, in the air. That'll be our height. And the Z, the blue arrow, is the width of the building, and so that is our that is our Z direction across this way. Now, if you notice this little white dot, this is the center point at which all objects are measured from in this 3D world. We'll call it the starting point. Let's look at how the starting point relates to our building that we just created. Our length is 100 feet in the X direction. Our height is 50 feet in the Y direction and our width is 50 feet in the Z direction. The X and Z dimensions are measured from the center of the building. You can obviously see that the starting point is in the middle of the building in the Z direction here. But you can also see that the starting point is not in the middle in the X or length direction. That's because 3D Lift Plan automatically moves the building half its length away from the starting point. This is so the starting point dot ends up at the edge of the building. It does this by putting a value in the center X box here. This is how far away the center of the building is from the starting point. You can also move the building center point in the Z direction, uh, but right now it's set at zero. Uh, the Y direction behaves a little bit different in that the height of the building is always just measured from the ground up. And the starting point dot is always sitting on the ground. If you have an object that you want to move up in the air, like a power line for example, you can use the bottom value right here to specify the amount of distance from the ground to the bottom of your object. You might want to play around with the different values in this row here and see how they affect the placement of your building. But in this video we're just going to move right along and we're going to search out a crane configuration that can do our lift. Okay, go ahead and we're going to click on the search cranes button. Okay, that takes us first to the search setup page. You can see our building, our load on top of the building, and the white dot starting point. Uh, the large red area is where the program is going to try to place the crane with the center pin of the crane somewhere on that white line. We can move that white line around by using the crane location controls here and therefore moving the possible positions of where the crane could be placed. So right now we're set up to have the crane possibly positioned as close to the building as 10 feet away or as far away as 500 feet when we search for a configuration that works. You can also move the white line from side to side by adjusting the Z value here. Let's try changing Z to 20 feet and hitting the update button. You'll notice the white line moves 20 feet to the right. If we wanted to move it 20 feet to the left, we would put in a negative value there, negative 20. Let's change it back to zero for now. The load location values here are just what they appear to be, the location of the load. So right now the load is 50 feet from the edge of the building in the X direction and 50 feet up in the air uh, sitting on the roof of the building in the Y direction. And of course you can also change the Z direction. Right now it's centered in the middle of the building at zero. These clearances values here are to tell the program 
that if it finds a configuration that works to pick this load, but if the carrier, boom, or rigging are within these distances, then it will throw out those results. Okay, let's press the next button. Just before we actually perform the search, on this page we can narrow down the results we want to get with these filters. We can pick which cranes we want included in our search. Of course, we only have one crane in our fleet at the moment, but if we had more, you would see them all in this list here. Over here on the right-hand side, we have some filters that can choose the types of charts that we want to uh, search through, uh, jib charts, on tire charts, etc. Uh, these other search options down here will be covered in the advanced features video. Okay, let's leave everything checked and push the next button to actually perform the search. Which takes us to our search results page. If no results had shown up, you would need to go back and change around your values, type of crane, type of chart, etc. to try to find a configuration that would actually do the lift. But it looks like we did find a result that will work for lifting our load, so let's go ahead and click on use this chart to take a look at it. Alright, here's the lift simulation page. But before we get into the lift simulation controls up here, I need to briefly run through how to navigate through your lift plan with the Flux player. Okay, start by left clicking on the explore button here down on the left. Put your mouse pointer in the picture, hold your left mouse key down while moving your mouse. This will allow you to fly around the job site. Hold down your right mouse key while moving your mouse around, and this will allow you to pan left or right, up or down, etc. Uh, you can also use your arrow keys on your keyboard, but they do act a little different. The side to side arrows will turn your view as if you were standing in one place, like so. The up and down arrows zoom in and out, but they move at a very slow pace, which could be useful in fine-tuning your view. During any of these actions with either the mouse or the keyboard, by holding down the shift key while you do it will accelerate the motion. Okay. Now, left click on the examine button, put your mouse pointer in the picture and hold your left mouse key down while moving your mouse. This will allow you to see the job site in 3D at any angle. It will basically rotate around the center of the job site. Hold down your right mouse key button while moving your mouse to pan like this, left and right up and down. The arrows on the keyboard behave like a left click with the mouse, but I find them a little easier to control. A little smoother motion there. When using any of the controls on the Flux Player, your mouse's wheel will act as a zoom. Click on the Seek button, and then click on the picture, and that will also act like a zoom. At any time, you can press the Level button to level out your picture, basically. The Back and Forward buttons act sort of like a browser's Back and Forward buttons, returning to a view that you, you were just at. And then over here, we have a list of preset views that you can choose from. You might want to take a moment and get familiar with them if you want to just run through them. ISO 1 is here. 
so two over here, and so on. They are a great way to get a good looking view for when you're ready to do a printout. I should note that when activating one of the spin views, you can still use the controls to set the point where the, the view actually will spin from. And to get out of the spin mode, just pick one of the other views. Okay, that's the flex player controls. At first they might seem a little awkward, but once you play around with them for a little bit, I think that you'll find that they're pretty easy to use to get what you want. Okay, now let's talk about the lift simulation controls. Here we have the center pin X control, which is the distance from the edge of the building to the center pin of the crane. Uh, we have the center pin Z control, which will move the crane from side to side in the Z direction. The carrier angle we can set, which will, will change the angle of the carrier and the boom with it. And the swing angle will just change the angle of the boom, leaving the carrier where it is. The hook height here will change the height of the load and the hook, but will keep the boom at the same angle. Now over here in this column, if we actually change any of these values, it will actually change what line in the load chart we're looking at, and it could change our capacity. Um, so what if we wanted to go in and change our boom angle to something much greater, like 75, and then we push the update button. We can actually see that the chart capacity went quite a ways up, and, um, and our lift radius got quite a bit shorter. We can go the opposite direction. We can set the lift radius to whatever we want it to be. And then we have to push the go button here. And the boom angle and capacity will adjust to compensate for the lift radius that we put in. Over here we have the tip height, the, uh, the net load, which we specified at the beginning of this lesson, and then the uh, chart capacity. Now I'd like you to come over here and click on the dimensions link. And all of these things that we can ch put check boxes next to are dimensions that we can add to our lift plan. What we're going to add in for this example is the tip height, the lift radius, and the lift arc. So check those boxes and then push the update button. And you'll see that we have some uh, dimensions that were added into our, our plan here. You can see the tip height here. The load radius of 60 feet here and our lift arc. If you then come over here and click on the load chart link, it will actually show you a sample of where that capacity came from in the actual load charts. Okay, now we're going to move on and actually look at how to print this thing out. Click on the Launch 3D Lift Plan Publisher. The 3D Lift Plan Publisher page then comes up. And we can add in uh, different information. You can put in your company logo. We can add notes about the plan, title, project, customer, whatnot. And then what we're going to do is go to the Preview button. And we can actually look, take a look at what it's going to look like. And we can then customize how we want it to look. If we want to change to a different viewpoint, maybe zoom out a little so we can get that dimension on the side here. Maybe something like that. And then push the Done button. And there's the preview of our printout. And then you can go ahead and print that, and we're done. Okay, that's going to conclude our video. Now you should hopefully have a basic understanding of how to use the software, and you can begin creating your own lift plans. Like I said before, uh, take a look at our advanced features video for a more in-depth look at some of the features. Thanks for watching, and thanks for using 3dliftplan.com.